Hey everyone, it's Phil. Welcome to a World's Finest Before the Bad Crossover. And for this special, we're going to be talking all things to Grayson because returning to talk with me once again is Kristen Gaiman herself, uh, who put together the book to Grayson Boy Wonder uh, for the 75th anniversary. And welcome back, Kristen. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me again. It's always fun to talk about comics with people who want to listen. <laughs> Well, before we get into the comics, um, it's been a couple months, you know, since what the summer. Uh, how's everything with the book going? It's been doing re- it's been doing really well. Um, I mean, I don't know actually how many copies we're selling because the publisher only puts that information out once a year, and I don't want to bother them. But they do keep a top twenty list of their top selling titles, and our book has made the top ten three months in a row. Awesome! Did I did I see you did some signings too? Oh yeah, I will. Um, the comic book, the comic book store, um, not in the town where I live, but um, in the town where I where. Um, yeah, we did a little, we did a little event down there, and it was pretty, and it was pretty fun. It was actually really cute. We had um a little kid who came with his mom, a little boy. I don't know, he was probably about eight or nine, and he knew all the facts about Dick Grayson and still he was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I needed audience participation, I could count on him to, to jump in. So is there anything uh, you learned this year from uh, working on the book about Dick Grayson you didn't know before? Hmm. I mean, I suppose facts-wise, just one, giving me a wider sense of all of the comics he's, he's been in. Because um, it's been, I don't know, I think Comic Vine keeps the count, and I think it's giving the full. Maybe it's probably over 5,000 by this point in time, which is a lot. And I know comic books are short, but there's really no way you're going to be able to read all that. Uh, so just learning about, hey, these are some other comics that he's been in uh, was very interesting. And then, of course, just seeing, um, and maybe this wasn't necessarily something I didn't know before about Dick, but getting a better sense of how... It can be good when there are some different comics that interpret him in slightly different ways. I mean, you know, we've got those sort of four traits where he's sort of, you know, a little bit, a little bit dark, but obviously not as dark as Batman. And, you know, he's, he's competent, but maybe not as hyper prepared. We can make jokes about it like we can about Batman. And, you know, he's got the jokes and those sort of things, but you can also mix that up a little bit and have some sort of darker versions of Dick Grayson. I always think of outsiders as being a kind of classic example of a somewhat darker version of Dick Grayson, which really isn't my favorite version of Dick Grayson. I'm not a huge Outsiders fan. It just wasn't really my um, cup of tea. But talking with people uh, who liked Outsiders more and wrote some articles that, you know, picked out things from Outsiders, that was really that was really interesting and helped me appreciate more sort of, you know, Sometimes we don't like it as fans when, you know, we're reading a version of Dick Grayson that we don't really like. But I sort of think it's important to have those different versions. Yeah, The Outsiders was weird because he was more darker. He's more like Batman. And then like around, I don't know, like issue 30 something, 20 or 30 something, I think they were going to kill him off. But they didn't, so originally it was supposed to be Jason Todd was supposed to take over, but then they kept Dick Grayson, so like his characterization and some of those issues was really weird. Oh yeah. So are you so how do you feel about the outsiders then? Like I said, I don't I don't like how dark they went with him. It, it, they basically could have had just had Batman in that mm-hmm. spot and it would have been the same exact story. Yeah, I time. think that's kind of it sorry, yeah, yeah. I think that's kind of it for me me too. Outsiders is just a little more gritty reboot, I guess, than what I prefer in my comic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I like it, him to be a little, little lighthearted and, you know, not quite as Batman-ish. Yeah. I mean, I do think there are some, you know, good stories. In it. Um, there's that one issue, I think it's Outsiders 20 or 21, where he kind of goes and has that moment with Bruce, and I like that because I pretty much always like Dick Bruce stuff. I mean, I'm like, really terribly written or something like Frank Miller but <laughs> uh, yeah no a, a lot of people do yeah so that but, um, was fun yeah but uh I almost forgot I wanted to thank you for uh helping me get the interviews with uh Devin Grayson and uh, but of course Tim Seeley that would have Tim Seeley wouldn't have gone down without you yes yes I yeah I really liked your um interviews in your give your podcast interviews with us uh, with Devin and with Devin and Tim and yeah I think um yeah I think it is a good 
point that we won't we won't like everything, and that's okay uh, because you know we're not the we're not the same. Everyone doesn't have the same likes, and so you know. Yeah, some people might think I'm ridiculous, but like I told Tim, I you know it's it's like art. You know, no one's going to interpret it. You know, two people aren't going to interpret it the same way all the time. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm a medievalist, so I think medieval art is awesome. But I totally understand when a lot of people think medieval art is terrible because yeah. you know it can. You know, yeah. I mean, there are some pretty weird things that happen in it. <laughs> <laughs> You're the expert, aren't you? Aren't you some kind of medieval? Maybe it's, you know, not the most skilled. <laughs> so yeah, but I guess I'm more of a sort of Titans uh, version of Titans version of Dick Grayson because I don't know the different Titans books always struck me as being a bit lighter uh, than the out than the Outsider. So yeah, 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 like- yeah. Um, so you said you you've been reading uh, Batman and Robin Eternal though. That was um main stuff, but then also I guess um. With the, with the book, I sort of heard and, you know, kind of anecdotally that, you know, Dick has a lot of, uh, female, female fans. And of course, I saw that, that a lot of people who wanted to contribute to the book, you know, were, were female, were female fans. Uh, and then, of course, you know, this was post the book, but, you know, when you were inter, when you were interviewing him, um, you know, that's like, you know, DC sort of acknowledges that now. Cause I think we, uh, Denny O'Neill about that, and he's like, "Oh, yeah, I don't know, that's awesome, or something like that." Um, but you know, I think maybe they weren't. DC wasn't paying as much attention to that uh, sometimes in in decades past as maybe they are now. Well, yeah, uh-huh. he, you know, Dick's still like a manly superhero, but he, uh, you know, he still has his like soft side, and I think it appeals to a lot of women. And yeah. Uh, so what have you, what have you been thinking? Uh, you said you're reading Batman and Robin Eternal, right? Yes. Uh, so what do you think so far? I have been. Um, well, so far, so far I like it. I'm, I must admit, I think I'm two weeks behind, so I haven't seen how the stuff plays out with Bane, with Bane yet. Um, I think that's what happens in weeks nine and ten, right? Uh, yeah. Um, but I have, I've, I've liked it. I mean, I am not really hardcore reading the main Batman title, so I don't really know a lot about about Harper Row, but she seems okay. <laughs> I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people have problems with her uh, since she kind of just like boom comes out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, she's been in and out of the books. Um, I don't know. We saw a little bit of her backstory, but not a lot. So I, I don't know if we're going to start building it here. One thing that I did kind of like a lot that happened in uh, oh, I'm it might have been week eight, but maybe it was week seven was when. Dick was talking to Jason about, oh, I have to have Harper and Cass do this thing to protect them. And Jason looks at him and says, it kind of sounds like a Bruce thing to do. And then the very next page, Dick doesn't do that. And he takes them with him to uh, to Prague. I liked that a lot. I thought that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, everyone's looking at Dick now. I guess he's, you know, he's surrogate Bruce, even though he doesn't want to be, kind of. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was a good moment though to show how you know he's he is different he is different from Bruce and maybe not just in the way he acts but also in the way that he's more receptive to people telling him stuff. Yeah, yeah, they've had a couple scenes in Making that. I, yeah, I think I don't know if it was last week. There's a scene with Jason and Tim where Jason's like telling him you know trying to be the guy who replaced Dick Grayson. Yeah. And, um, um, so I have a question for you. How have you been feeling about Jason Todd in Batman and Robin Eternal? Because do you know a lot about Jason Todd? Do you feel like this is a pretty good interpretation of Jason Todd? Because I've seen people getting kind of annoyed that Jason's drinking so much. It's just, they're just so uh, schizophrenic, it seems, with his characterization. You know, when he first came back, he was like all anti-Batman and then after New 52 he was more on you know he was more team Batman and and like he has a book with Roy Harper and sometimes he's he's like so level-headed and then if you see him in other books he just seems like you know he's shoot first ask questions later so Uh I don't I don't know if they have like a uh I don't know if there's like a specific uh characterization of Jason that anyone has yeah I have a Jason Todd game plan yet yeah it's like, what do we need him to be in the story? And so, yeah, because he's he sort of strikes me as maybe they're kind of using him as comic relief a lot of the time. It seems to be. It's like either comic relief or if he needs, you know, somebody to be, you know, 
you know, the guy with the guns, it's him or. Yeah. And how do you feel? Since I know you like the Robins as well. How are you feeling about new 52 Tim? <laughs> uh, I don't like a lot of his backstory. It's just in the new 52. It's like, oh, he was never a Robin. He just went straight to being Red Robin and. I don't know. It just seems like they're monkeying with his, you know, I liked his old backstory and everything, and it just seems like they, they're just monkeying with too much now, but they do a lot of that in the New 52, so. Yeah, he just he's just not as likable as he used to be, and it's a little bit sad. Yeah, I, I like the big brother-little brother relationship him and Dick used to have, and I don't think they have quite as close a relationship now. Yeah, and I thought, yeah, and I thought it was so funny in that one episode well, not episode, issue of Batman and Robin Eternal when Dick goes to Tim's house to check to check him out and then Tim gets all mad. They're like, oh, I did all this stuff to protect my parents. But like, really, it's not a very good job because you guys still have the same last name and it's right out there on the mailbox and your parents have pictures of you all around the house. <laughs> I know, and that's another example where he was like, oh, you're so, you're so like Bruce, you know. But um, yeah, so you haven't read the last two weeks of uh, Eternal, so yeah, the whole thing with Bane, someone's trying to take over the island, and it's the uh, Order of St. Uh, Dumas, and uh looks like we're getting uh, New 52 Azrael. Nice. Who seems sounds, completely brainwashed. What? I said, well, that sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> and did you say, did you start the Robin War yet? Or uh, I said, uh, did you start the Robin War, did you say, or no? Oh, did I start Robin War? Yes. Yes. I read the, I, yes, I did. Okay, so you read Robin War number one. Yes, and I thought that that was very interesting, and I'm more excited about Robin War now than I was just hearing the title. Because I, because I thought that Robin War, just the title, I know it made me think of back earlier in the New 52 when Damien did that whole, I'm going to defeat you all and take something that's valuable to you thing, and I thought it was going to be a war among the Robins, and I thought, hmm. I don't really want to do that again, uh, no. but now it's but now it seems that it's sort of a war for the Robins against against the man, or uh, you know, or sort of for control of we are Robin, and that sounds much more exciting. Yeah, and did, you saw that last page there, uh, the Court of Owls, and it looks like we're getting get Nightwing back, maybe. Yeah, I saw some people thinking though that that means that somebody else is going to become Nightwing, and people are getting pretty bent out of shape about that. Oh, I hope not. You hope that someone else doesn't end up as Nightwing. Yeah, it, it you know, it's it's Dix, and he, you know, he needs a mask and a code name back. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that Dick won't become Nightwing again because I think the Grayson comic is very successful, and they're still, I mean, they have a plan for a lot of issues for that. So I don't think he would become Nightwing. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, but I think I think he, he's pretty popular no matter who he is. So I don't know. Yeah, that's. Yeah. For some reason, I just that think is true. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, I'm not actually totally devoted to Dick being Nightwing. I mean, I guess I could get on board with someone else being Nightwing. It would be weird at first, though. Yeah, I just didn't know if he was more marketable as but Nightwing. I, don't know. I think it would probably be better if they didn't have someone else become Nightwing. Everything doesn't have to be a legacy thing that you pass down. People can make up their own names too. Yeah, and I just thought he would be more marketable as Nightwing rather than Grayson. You know, merchandise wise and everything. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe they'll have him be a part-time spy and a part-time Nightwing. Yeah, they could do that. That would be cool. Yeah, because I always feel like, I know sometimes people get annoyed when comics don't work out, you know, when the be spiraling and also be Robin Mooring at the same time, but, like, whatever, let's just go with it. Yeah, because I just, it's, and it's just... They, they've done this with other heroes, but it's like the whole thing with, you know, the whole world knowing his identity, yeah. that never lasts. You know, not forever. Yeah, exactly. You know, willing to, willing suspension of disbelief kind of thing. I'll just assume that he can basically be in as many places as he needs to be at all at the same time. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's always my big problem. It's like, you know, does Batman and Robin Eternal, when does Robin War take place in there? And, you know, I like to know whatever, every, you know, the timeline for everything. Yeah, I still wish that, yes, I still wish they would fix up that five-year time, that five-year timeline, although I feel like we're mostly ignoring it now, so it's okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they just need to go back to pre-New 52. <laughs> yeah. 
they kind of kind of abandon abandon that because they they just lost so much because like I said uh Red Hood and Red Robin uh encounter Azrael and they don't seem to recognize him and it's like okay so Nightfall never happened yeah yeah I know it is kind of yeah some people have been saying that you know they they like that you know Jason and Tim are getting along so well but it also seems a little weird yeah yeah because you know, Jason was always Mr. Antisocial. Well, before we end this, um, I don't know if we already covered this, but what do you hope? What do you hope to see in either Batman and Robin Eternal or Robin War? Like, how do you want it to end? Oh wow, hmm. that's a good question. I haven't thought too much, too much, of, too much about it. Well, I guess as far as Robin Wars continue or concerned, I hope that you know. Nocturna is exposed as a nefarious politician, uh, you know, and that I don't, I mean, it would be great if they could sort of get rid of the Court of Owls. It would be really great to sort of prove how awesome the Robins are that they could do something Batman couldn't, but ha ha ha. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> maybe only in our, maybe only in our minds that will happen. I don't think that will be in a real. <laughs> if Batman can't do it, that's good. Um, so. That'd be good. Oh yeah, with I don't know with yeah with Batman and Robin, Batman and Robin Eternal. Yeah, the whole thing with Mother. Yeah, I, would you- I kind of hope Alden. I can, because I sort of like the. I mean, I think Dick, you know, has a very good or, origin story. Uh, so I kind of hope that that isn't messed with mess with too much. I don't know. I kind of hope it's one of those things that you know maybe Bruce thinks it's a huge big deal and it turns out it's not. <laughs> Would you be all right if they messed with, like, one of the other Robins where they showed, like, you know, he had one of them mentally, whatever, to turn them into the perfect soldier or something? Oh, I mean, yes, because I'm totally biased. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, I mean, like, it's ter- it's terrible. Um, well, I mean, they kind of already have messed with Jason's origin, which I think they made it. I think they made it a bit worse because they made him be like peddling drugs or whatever, which was kind of uncool. Yeah, they um, messed with his origin a couple times, and even Tim in the New Fifty Two has a different origin. Yeah, so yeah, I guess as far as the New Fifty Two is concerned, Dick's origin mostly remained the same, except it messed up the timeline and made him a lot older. So you know, if they change that, I guess I'd be fine with that. And then as far as Jason and Tim, they've already kind of changed their origins. As far as the new 52 is concerned, it seems so much anyway that I guess it's kind of, you know, well, whatever at this point. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, so any final thoughts on Dick Grayson? It's really kind of awesome how many comics he's been in lately. I can't quite keep up, but it's exciting that he's getting so much attention. <laughs> oh, yeah. With, uh, with Bruce Wayne having amnesia right now. Yeah. Like Dick Grayson is like the new Batman right now. They put him in, like, yeah. put him in like everything. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, they know it sells. To say the least. Yeah, that was one of the greatest things when Dick was Batman. Was he was in so many comics every month. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was in Justice League. He was in everything. Yeah. All right, well, before before we go, do you want to uh, do you want to plug anything, the book, or... Uh... Um, I'm, I guess I can plug the book in. It is now, since the last time we talked, I forgot to mention before, it has come out in a Kindle version, which is much cheaper. Uh, so that's less than 20 bucks. So if you want to read it, but save yourself money, you can do that. (laughs) All right. Well, we're going to be sitting here waiting for your, uh, your sequel. Well, hopefully we can, (laughs) we can bring one together. It would be really fun. That's awesome. But, uh. Yeah, just let me know if you want to uh, talk anything again, you know, Batman or, as Batman and Robin Eternal goes on or, uh, you know, once Robin War ends, if you want to discuss anything, just let me know. All right. Sounds good. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, everyone. So, uh, sorry for all the Skype problems. Uh, I don't know what was going on there, but uh, yes, that was uh, Kristen L. Uh, Gaiman, her book, Dick Grayson, Boy Wonder. Uh, like she said, you can get it uh, print copy. And you can also get it in uh, Kindle now, I guess. So uh, let me know your thoughts on this interview. Uh, anything Batman, Dick Grayson, basically anything DC Comics. Or if you're a uh, comic book creator. Um, I've even been interviewing cosplayers lately. So um, 
if you think you have an interesting hobby career you know just let me know uh you can get a hold of me uh well my personal info is uh nightwing pdp at gmail.com and on twitter i'm at nightwing pdp uh, and if you want to talk anything batman or dc comics with me uh especially if you're a comics creator um you can email world's finest pod at gmail.com and on twitter we're at world's finest pod and that's it for me until next time later everyone <laughs>